Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Anywhere Smart Adapter. This is a little device that screws into any light socket and adds smart light bulb functionality, but also gives you the ability to monitor some things in the room, including temperature, humidity, and it has a decibel meter so it can act as a security notification device as well. We're going to take a look and see what you can do with this in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I got this free of charge from anywhere at CES. They just tossed one to me when I stopped by their booth. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little device can do. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, this costs about $75, so it's a little more expensive than what a smart light bulb might cost you, but it has those sensors that I mentioned at the outset, so there might be some value to having an all-in-one device like this. Hopefully they can maybe get the price uh, lowered a bit as things develop. Pretty simple, again, you just plug it into your lamp. Uh, there's no bulb though included. You have to get some bulbs to go with it. I picked up a pack of these uh, six watt little E12 bulbs that are compatible with the socket here on the top. Uh, it will only work with LED light bulbs uh, and you can get these really inexpensively. This pack of three cost me like 12 bucks or something like that. So it wasn't all that expensive to get uh, the bulbs going with this. It will not work with incandescent bulbs. If you do plug one in, it will tell you that it won't work. Uh, that's probably because of the heat that those bulbs generate. So you'll want to get, again, an LED E12 bulb to pop into the top of the socket. And then you've got yourself a uh, working little adapter here. There is a switch here for turning the bulb on or off. So if you don't want to have to rely on an app to get your lights on, uh, you can walk up to this thing and push the button uh, just like you would normally do on a lamp, for example. And the reason why they have the button here is that your lamp has to always be on for the sensors to work inside of the adapter. So this is an alternative to uh, a manual lamp switch, and I thought that was a nice touch to have that in there. Now the adapter will connect up to your Wi-Fi network to operate. However, when I set it up, I had to type in my Wi-Fi information manually. So I had to type in the network name and the password. It didn't do a discovery uh, of available Wi-Fi networks around it. So that was one thing that uh, slowed me down a little bit. And you may want to take note of your Wi-Fi network name and password before you get started. Uh, after that, though, it got itself up on the network and its app found everything automatically. I was also able to configure it with the Amazon A word. Uh, you do have to download a skill for this device to your Amazon uh, account. And then after that, it will show up like any other smart home device will within your Amazon ecosystem. So if you have an Amazon Echo, uh, you could put this device inside of a room in your configuration, issue a single command, and it will turn off all the bulbs from other manufacturers and this one uh, with that single command. So it seems like it's integrated well with the Amazon stuff. It is going to work also with Google Home. However, at the time I'm recording this video, it was not yet certified to do so, so I was unable to test that, but maybe we'll do a follow-up uh, when that functionality comes into place. And they unfortunately do not have plans for Apple HomeKit at this time. So let's get this thing hooked up to a lamp and see how it works. All right, so we've got the lamp installed in the lamp socket. And if I go over here and just push the button, you can see the light turns on, pretty simple there. And then of course, we've got the app that you use to control it. And we'll get into some of these scenes here in a second, but we'll start uh, with the basics here, which is the adapter itself. Uh, so if I go over here and just tap on the little light bulb icon, uh, that will turn on the bulb. And I can, of course, adjust the brightness here uh, with the brightness control on there as well. So you have that option. If I tap outside of the light bulb, uh, you'll get some of the basic data coming back from the sensors. Uh, so right now it's registering 30 decibels, partly because I'm talking. Uh, usually it's a little bit lower than that. And you can see here on the chart that you get a pretty good breakdown of time over what it was detecting. And I'll get into the intrusion detection threshold here in a second. You can also drill down to the last 24 hours to get a better idea as to what was going on. Uh, so you can see it's been relatively consistent here. Uh, same goes with temperature. You can see the temperature variation. I did, however, find that the uh, thermometer on this feels about five degrees off because this room is 67 degrees. I brought down a few traditional thermometers to verify that. And I put those thermometers right where the uh, light adapter was located. Uh, it keeps registering at around 62 degrees or so. So at least it's off, but it's off in the colder direction. That might give you a little bit more time to prevent your pipes from freezing. But 
uh, nonetheless, it was not accurate to the actual temperature. Now, I also installed this in a lamp that had a lampshade, and then I ran the light bulb uh, for a couple of hours to see if it had any impact on the temperature reading. It did not. So I'm guessing they're doing some calculation to factor that in, and perhaps that is why we're not getting a fully accurate temperature reading here. Again, you're about five degrees colder uh, than you might actually be. Now, right before I went to upload the video, the company reached out to me with a way of recalibrating the socket if you're running into trouble. Uh, so what you need to do is unplug it for about uh, 95 minutes or so, they say. And then when you plug it back in, put it back into the lamp without a bulb installed and that will force it to recalibrate the temperature sensor. And that looks like it did the trick for me. The room was about 71 degrees, and that was what I was getting uh, after I went through this recalibration. So if you're noticing the temperature being off on your device, uh, this will probably fix it. I have no way of knowing whether or not the humidity level here is accurate. Uh, it appears to be so given uh, how my room feels compared to some of the more damper rooms in the house. So I think it is probably close to accurate, but again, it might have some variations uh, from some other sensors that you might be running with. Uh, the decibel meter I found does seem to be working pretty well. In fact, I was doing uh, some testing with trying to set off the intrusion alarm, which I'll show you in a few minutes, and it was able to pick those things up in almost real time. I do think the data that you get back from the device here is a bit delayed. Uh, but you will be able to detect an intrusion pretty much the moment it happens. And I'll show you how that works now with the scene setting. Now, the scene section kind of confused me initially because I always associated that word in smart home devices with the color of lights and that sort of thing. On this device, scenes determine how the device behaves and what it's looking for. Uh, so right now, I've got three of them loaded up on the device intrusion detection, energy saving mode, and indoor climate monitoring. Now you can have three scenes active at any time. And when I first set it up, intrusion detection was nowhere to be found. So what you have to do is actually go in and replace one scene with another. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to swap out the energy saving mode, this is pretty basic. If you leave the house, it turns the lights off. I can tap on those three little periods there and then say replace the scene. And what it will give me is uh, the preventative burglar light here is an alternative. I'm guessing over time they may add more functionality to this feature. Uh, so now that I've done that, you can see the second uh, option there now is the preventative burglar light. If I tap on that, it will give me some more information as to what's going on. If I tap on edit, I can uh, control when things go on or off. So with this feature, I could have the uh, light turn on at sunset, for example, and turn off at sunrise. And then I can also have it detect whether or not I am home. So if I get home, it might turn off the lights automatically. And if I leave, it will turn them back on. And then, of course, we'll have its usual rules for that. You do have to activate these scenes for them to work, though. So you want to make sure you turn those on. Uh, when you do that, the color of the icon will change from black to orange. Uh, indoor climate monitoring is what exactly what it sounds like. You can have it uh, send you notifications if the temperature gets in a certain zone, and you can go in and edit those temperatures, the mins and the maxes there, along with humidity as well. So you have the ability to get uh, exactly the reading you want to trigger a notification. Uh, those notifications will be delivered through their app on your phone. So if you're using Android or iOS, they'll push you a notification when you hit one of those thresholds. Pretty basic stuff there. It will also bank up the notifications here inside the app so you can get an idea as to when an intrusion alert was triggered, for example, or uh, one of those other alerts as well. Now, I found the intrusion detection scene to be one of the more interesting components here because you can turn your lamp uh, into an intrusion detector. Uh, let's see how that works real quick. We're just going to go into that scene and edit it. Now, what it's doing here is it's listening for sounds that are 80 decibels or higher. If it hears that, it's going to push you a notification. You can also set it to deliver notifications to more than just you. You can have it email people, for example. Uh, you can also have it send out uh, push notifications to other people on their phones as well. In addition to those notifications, it's going to flash the light in this instance for six minutes, but you can make that longer or shorter if you want. And then there's another option here for snoozing. And what this is, is that once it does detect a noise, it won't keep sending you notifications for as long as you sit there on the snooze. And that might be helpful if you have somebody coming by the house to check things out. You might want to be notified when they come in, but you don't want to maybe get 500 notifications while they're in your home. So you can set a time limit for that. 
uh, so that you won't get too many of those. And you can also set it so that when you're home, the intrusion detection is disarmed, but when you leave, it will rearm itself. So it can kind of work like uh, some of the other home security products that we've worked with. Now, one of the cool things about this is that it works with IFTTT. And I thought to demonstrate the uh, intrusion detector, uh, perhaps we will make a little recipe for that to happen. So if you haven't played with IFTTT, uh, check it out because it really is a great way to connect a lot of different devices together. Uh, so anywhere is compatible with it. And I have uh, its intrusion detector trigger set here. And when that trigger is activated, uh, IFTTT will then turn on a light uh, that's manufactured by a different smart home manufacturer, in this case, one of these CASA lights. So the smart adapter now is armed and ready to go. I'm going to scream into it here. Hello, Mr. Lightbulb, hello. And woo, I got blinded there. You can see it's starting to flash. And then what'll happen here is it will trigger IFTTT and that will turn my light red as well. I have a little thing called red alert set up there to uh, make that scene happen on the lamp. Uh, but one thing to note is that IFTTT is not always immediate. So I wouldn't depend on an IFTTT alert for this to work. Uh, you really want to, I think, rely on the app itself uh, given that I'm finding IFTTT is not responding consistently every time I trigger one of these things. But you can also see that the Anywhere app pushed an alert to my phone and it told me what time that it happened and which one of my devices triggered it. And if I go into this, you can see now it's giving me more information about this. Uh, this seems a little bit off to me because my options are to snooze it uh, or to deactivate. And I assume deactivating would just turn the alarm off, which it does. You can see that the thing stopped flashing, but it also in turn uh, turned off the intrusion detection itself. So I need to turn that back on again manually. So you probably want to push that snooze button uh, just to get the light to stop flashing uh, without having your uh, complete scene here shut off all the way. But that was one thing that I think they could probably adjust in software. And you can also see some of the other triggers you can set up here with the device. So we just did the trigger detection here. Uh, that will, of course, then connect with any other IFTTT compatible device like our CASA bulb there. Uh, you can also have it look for temperature variations and when you activate energy saving mode. But unfortunately, at the moment, it does not allow you to do anything with the moisture sensor, which I think would be of interest to a lot of folks. Uh, you can also have it take actions too. So you could have another device uh, turn the light on, for example, or set the light level. And you can also stop alerts too if you want to have something else trigger the end of that alert. So you do have a few options there. Let's take a look and see what kind of Amazon options we have. So we're inside the Amazon A Word app and I can issue voice commands here to have the bulb turn on. So I can say, turn on anywhere. And there we go, it's on now. Uh, now, of course, this thing I named anywhere, but I could really call it anything I want. I can go into it directly here and control it uh, through the app. And I'm guessing if you had one of those uh, Amazon devices with a display, you'd see a similar control here. Uh, one thing I've noticed though, is that it's not as intuitive as some other devices I have used in the sense that on this Casa bulb, I've got a slider for adjusting brightness uh, here. It's just, just tapping on a specific value. Uh, but I could say, turn anywhere to 80% and that will brighten the bulb up that way. So all the voice commands work on here. And I'm also able to group it, as you can see, into my basement group. So I could say, turn off the basement lights. And then both lights will turn off like that. So it seems like most of the Amazon integration here is working. However, you don't have access to the sensors right now on Amazon. It will only turn on or off the bulb and adjust brightness. So you couldn't, for example, uh, integrate some of the sensor data into an Amazon routine that would trigger some of your other devices. Uh, you can, of course, as you saw, do that through IFTTT, but not through uh, Amazon or Google Home right now. That's something I would like to see in the future. Now, of course, if you have one of these Amazon Echo devices, you can do what you just saw uh, just by issuing the A word trigger. We've been trying to find ways to not inadvertently trigger people's devices, which is why we use my phone for the demo here, but you can do the same thing through uh, one of your favorite devices with the A word. So that's gonna do it for our look here at the Anywhere Smart Adapter. It's a neat little device that I think probably costs a little bit too much at the moment, given that you have to bring your own light bulb into the mix here. Uh, so 75 bucks 
maybe it's a little bit too much. Maybe 45 or 50 would be a little better of a price. But nonetheless, I like what they're doing with it. I like the sensors that they chose for this. I would like to see, though, more integration uh, of those sensors with Amazon, for example, and Google Home when available, uh, because right now you really can't integrate the data coming off of this with your existing home hub routines, which I know a lot of people probably would want to do. They do work okay through their app, but they are kind of disconnected and you can't have it trigger something else, for example, if your uh, pipes start to freeze or something like that. So uh, maybe a little bit tighter integration would be a nice step in the right direction here. And of course, a little bit more polish on their app to uh, make it a little bit more intuitive. But nonetheless, it seems to work pretty well and it's kind of a neat little device that uh, is a little bit different than some of the other IoT things we have looked at. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Anuj Zaveri, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe.